which cryptocurrency is being attacked by the SEC after excerpt. How long will crypto holders believe in Ripple? How much will excerpt cost in mid-2020? David Schwartz, Ripple's Keto, tweeted contentious remarks against Stellar Lumens creator Jed McCaleb. Schwartz called McCaleb a crazy fool holding a live grenade when comparing Ripple with Stellar. Schwartz's latest statement sparked approximately 200,000 Bitcoin community conversations. A crypto influencer asked Ripple to his biggest Stellar critique in an August 2022 tweet. Schwartz didn't comment, but McCaleb said Stellar threatened excerpt. Stellar's co-founder said they weren't friends. See also, FTAX founder Sam Bankman, Fried pleads not guilty, requests charges be dropped. Stellar co-founder alluded to a Las Vegas excerpt community program update in a May 8 tweet. McCaleb suggested the SEC chair set things straight in the Ripple. SEC lawsuit. Schwartz labeled McCaleb an idiot and warned crypto fans a few hours after the tweet. He showed a police officer who mistakenly let off a live bomb in a vehicle. Schwartz decided that the video depicts McCaleb. Schwartz was criticized for employing personal attacks rather than promoting Ripple's technology. Others supported the Ripple cut too. Envy is never a good look, Schwartz, Stellar's co-founder said. McCaleb also offered the Ripple Katu a position as his secretary at Stellar. Both groups' blockchain payment methods seek to better the banking industry, but their debate may not end soon. Attacking each other during the crypto industry's regulatory conflict is unwise. Attorney John Deaton suggested crypto businesses work together to win. Ari, a notable media figure and XRP community member, denies Ripple's XRP ICO claims. Eri responded to a Protos report. The media company's assertion that Ripple owns most extra ledger owns was refuted. According to Protos, Ripple conducted one of the first ICOs. The U.S. SEC accused Ripple and its officials with this in December 2020. Eri reiterated that Ripple never had an ICO. Startups and projects utilize ICOs to crowdfund by issuing new tokens. ICOs sell digital tokens to investors instead of corporate shares like conventional IPOs. Ripple sells XOP to support its infrastructure, but it denies doing a single sale like an ICO. Unlike ECOS, Ripple's selling of XARP includes an already circulating asset that can be traded on several platforms. The Proto story said that investors had to buy XARP using Ethereum, U, during the ICO, while Ari noted that XARP had been in circulation for three years before Ether debuted. SARP predates the ICO. Every other case in which courts have ruled that digital asset transactions were investment contracts involved an issuer's ICO or other promise of future tokens. At the start of the SEC litigation, Ripple said in court, the company had never had an ICO, never sold future tokens, and had not contracts with most XRP holders. Former CFC head Chris Giancarlo also stated that XRP investors do not depend on Ripple's efforts for profits, which the SEC uses to classify assets as investment contracts. Giancarlo noted that the XRP ledger coin is independent of Ripple. XRP and the XRP ledger would survive a Ripple collapse. He noted that Ripple collapse. He noted that Ripple, independent third-party validators, manage the network. Ripple controls the cooperation rate of ULs, according to a Protos report implying control over the XRP ledger's consensus process. This questions XRP decentralization. Justin Bones, according to the Crypto Basic, agrees. The XRP community addressed the Protos article's assertions. Unlike Ripple, the XRP foundation controls the Dunnel Currently with 36 validators, independent community members run the foundation. Community members noted that although the network favors alls, people are free to select. Ripple Kate to David Schwartz noted this. The FedNow Quick Payment Service is set to launch soon, and on May 11, the Metal blockchain team announced that it would be integrated with FedNow. Metal users may now utilize the send-receive feature of FedNow to immediately convert their cash to stablecoin and back. The partnership between FedNow and Metal Blockchain exemplifies the growing convergence of blockchain technology and conventional banking. Metallicus has created a cryptocurrency network called Metal Blockchain, which is based on a fork of the original Avalanche source code. It was created so that developers working on decentralized financial DeFi systems would have alternatives that wouldn't break the law. As a sign of its dedication to identity verification and anti-money laundering, AML. Safeguard's Metals creators have stressed the network's basis of Bank Secrecy Act. ZO, Compliance Developers may create and apply asset transfer rules on Metal Blockchain's X-Chain subnet. A token may be issued with some limitations, such as being used exclusively by residents of the United States or being unavailable for trade until the next day.
Metal was one of the first blockchain networks to be included as a FedNow service provider, and although the precise criteria for integration with FedNow remain unknown, Metal's adherence to regulatory requirements undoubtedly contributed to its participation. The integration between Metal Blockchain and FedNow paves the way for the creation of distributed bank chains. This paves the way for the development of a more robust ecosystem for the blockchain, one that provides security and does away with the need for Oracle. By maintaining a connection to FedNow, banks may coordinate payment processing and settlements. In addition, the adoption of a CBC and the creation of bank issued stablecoins that can interact within a basket of stablecoin currencies are both made easier thanks to this connection. Some U.S. politicians, including Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and U.S. presidential candidate Robert Kennedy Jr., are worried about the privacy implications of the integration of FedNow and Metal Blockchain and see it as a first step toward a blockchain, based despite its potential benefits, despite its potential benefits. The Federal Reserve, meanwhile, has disputed that FedNow is affiliated with a CBETS. Metallicus co-founder and CEO Marshall Hayner responded to complaints about CBETS by saying they will be subjected to the same degree of scrutiny as the conventional banking system. The integration of metal blockchain with FedNow, he said, would improve the current financial infrastructure and promote safe and efficient payment processing between banks, therefore putting to rest the issues surrounding CBETS. Finally, the integration of FedNow and Metal Blockchain represents a significant step forward in the world of fast payments and decentralized finance. Because of this connection, consumers may easily exchange fiat currency for stablecoins, opening the door to greater financial inclusion and efficiency. Metal Blockchain's approach to regulatory compliance and the possibility of distributed bank chains show how conventional banking institutions and blockchain technology are converging a trend that will shape the future of digital payment. Ripple's advocate attorney John Deaton argues that even if XARP and Bitcoin are not intrinsically securities, they may be recognized as such when traded on the main market. An agreement between Ripple and the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, is more likely to be reached if one adopts this point of view. Deaton stresses the need of carefully examining each XARP transaction, whether it be a primary or secondary sale. Although digital assets are not inherently securities, it is important to examine the particulars of each transaction to decide whether or not they should be treated as securities. Deaton claims that XARP and Bitcoin do not pass the Howey test, the standard used to determine whether or not an asset is a security. To be clear, XRP is not a security in and of itself. Nevertheless, it may be considered as one during a sale. Therefore, the SEC must investigate all sales, whether they occur in the main or secondary market. The lawyer cites related court cases to buttress his claim. He cites the SEC VVs. Elbury case in which it was determined that secondary Elbury credits Lou BPU as securities transactions, token sales need not be treated as securities transactions. This is a big deal, since it might have a bearing on the sex case against Ripple. The result of the case may depend on whether or not XARP is recognized as being sold as one, while not being a security in and of itself. A settlement for Ripple that has comparable ramifications to the Elbri case, where the SEC found that secondary sales of Elbri coins did not constitute securities transactions, becomes increasingly possible. Those who believe in the potential of Ripple and XARP may see this as good news. Possible terms of a settlement might specify that primary sales of XRP by Ripple and its executives would be treated as securities, but secondary market transactions would not. The regulatory status and trading of XARP would be profoundly affected by this difference. 